All right. Uh, we went into the law of Deuteronomy 6, reading where we get the credo from. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one in Deuteronomy 6. A command coming directly from the Most High God, a higher, a shah, a higher, to the children of Israel, to our foreparents, coming out of the land of Egypt. A decree that we should follow his commandments from that day going forth. Now, the lesson that we have today is a short lesson, but it's a much needed lesson. The trials of having the truth. All right. Once we get this truth or find out that we are the children of God, or even when Gentiles find out the truth that we are the children of God and that religion all over the earth is really a pretext to a new age, one world order religion to worship Lucifer. Something happens, one or the other. Either they ignore the information altogether and decide that they would rather deal with their tradition and not know anything going further, knowing that if they do keep to the truth, there's a level of accountability. That's one. The other one is people like you and I who know that it's the truth and know there is no option but to follow the truth, which is the Bible. Immediately when we find the truth, it's exciting. What happens? You go into the word, you understand that everything else is a lie. And then you begin to obtain all this wisdom and information and understanding that, was, that you find out later was purposely hit from you. And you begin to see everything you look into in a different light. You begin to understand everything around you. You look at the same news programs and television shows that you used to see and used to hear, but you're actually getting more from them with the newfound knowledge of what the world is. Something else is going on. You're going through a metamorphosis, a change. So you have all these emotions going on, understanding the truth, and it's perplexed to why everyone around you whom you love can't see. So you, you feel alone. So these are all the things we go through. And brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you that this is a natural progression we are not to run from. And I wanted to say that because, believe it or not, and it happens every time this time of year, we go into a state of indecision, loneliness, and despair. Why? Because usually at the last quarter of the year, it's tradition time. It's holiday time. It's family time. So the music is going to play on you. The feeling you had when you ran down the steps Christmas Eve and watching to see what mommy and daddy was bringing you. The feelings of seeing the Christmas tree after helping decorate it. All these feelings come to you and it leaves you with great memories of your youth. How the person you cared about on that day as you grew gave you certain things on that day that instilled a memory in you that you knew was love, that really had nothing to do with that holiday, but that moment commemorates that feeling. So we're going into a time of I would, which I would, which I would call right now the highest level of sorcery and witchcraft throughout the earth. It's a time we're going into that tries our spirit. And I said it many times before, uh, even speaking on the streets, it's as if this whole holiday time, the last quarter of the year, the whole earth goes into a trance and into 
celebration mode. And then when the ball dropped on New Year's Eve going into the new year, it's as if you snap from the trance. Happy New Year's and now you forgot that you've been under a trance with the music, with the euphoria, with the, with the Christmas and the holiday uh, 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 um, cartoons that, that's actually meticulously aimed towards keeping the children in this particular tradition. Right? So what I wanted to go into is the trials of having the truth, not the holidays. We had a lot of time to deal with that. But there's a lot of trials and loneliness. And you have to realize, brothers and sisters, we are not alone. That even though we're singled out and we're to ourselves and we feel alone, there's others out there that, are, that have been chosen out of the world that feel the same way. But it's for a purpose. Just because you are excluded from the world doesn't mean there's not a purpose for your life. So the most, what the Most High does is, and he does this to all the greats that you read in the Bible, he separates his own from the population, from the thoughts of the population, so that he can instill his will and his purpose in you. He does that on purpose. You notice when he's speaking to the prophets, even Christ before his ministry, being the son of the Most High from the beginning, he was told to go into a wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, totally separated from the population so that he can connect. Now, a lot of us be in our financial situation and how this world is set up don't have the options to just be pulled out and get built by the Most High himself. We don't have those options, but there's spurts all throughout the months in which we have that alone time to get to understand ourselves that you wouldn't have otherwise if we were like a hamster on a wheel just dealing with the everyday operation and programming. Okay, this, it, it starts Happy New Year's, you know, that everyone feels so good. Okay, here come Easter. Okay, all right, all right, on and on and on. Okay, here, here come Thanksgiving. Okay, in America we got Thanksgiving with a celebration of slaughtering the North American Indians who are from the tribe of Gad. And everyone is celebrating their death as a sacrifice to Satan. And then it's okay. The children up are up in the mold wondering what are they, what are they going to get. So they're not really focused on Christmas per se. They're more focused on what am I going to get? Xbox or mom, you think you can get me this new thing? Or mom, can I get this? Or dad, can I get this? You're more, I know I've been there. See? Or how much this person really care about me? Or will they get me this? Will they get me that? So we go through that. And then we go through, okay, it's party time. Anything happens here, stays here. New Year's Eve. Where, and it really plays on your spirit, those that are in the world. Why? Because that's the day, according to our traditions, that the person you love is supposed to be by your side. So that you can bring in the new year, a new year resolution with the person. And, and what about those who don't have anyone? The loneliness and despair that comes from it. There's more suicides and death during these last three, these next three months than any time during the year. So what we're telling you brothers and sisters is you've been pulled out for a specific purpose and you will be alone because you are alone okay if Christ was in this world he would be alone there's no church on earth today would accept Christ if he was to walk into their church not one church today Christ would be alone so I wanted to go into a few things so that brothers and sisters are noted because sometimes people feel alone and they look to lash out at others because they're alone. 
not realizing it's the most high taking an opportunity for them to examine themselves and connect. So we have to thank the most high for leisure time. It tell you that in the Apocrypha, that that leisure he gives you to be alone is a blessing. Because you have to fight with the spirits within yourself. You have to, and we stay so busy in this world, we pay no attention to our deficiencies. We think that everything that's wrong is from the outside of us. But when you're, but when you're alone, you have no one to deal with but yourself. The things you could have did differently, the regrets you have, all these things play into your mind, and it's just you and the most high. Or the things that you would like to do, that how you would like to be you, utilized. And anyone that have done anything in this world will, will and if you was, was to speak to them today, they would go back to that moment of loneliness where they got an epiphany or something just clicked. They never equate that to the most high, giving them direction, but that's how it works. That's how it works. So we have to learn how to stay busy up here to connect with the Most High, even if we're doing nothing, so that our idleness don't become Satan's playground. Mm -hmm. Let's go in Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes first. And I'm going to show you, Ezekiel dealt with it. John the Revelator dealt with it. It's a normal thing for the Most High to separate those. And, I, and guess what? Usually when you hear about information like this, the world would want to use it and say, this is a cult. The first thing they want to do is separate you from your program. And they want to separate you from your family. They want to separate you from the things you've learned. And they, they have actually chalked that up as being in a cult. When really, we're not saying separate from your family. We never say it's, what we're saying is understand what you're dealing with and how you were brought up was to serve Satan. Okay. And two cannot walk together lest they be agreed. So when you get the truth, there is going to be a, a, an initial drawback from the world. That's not a cult. That's you actually processing and, and looking to make sense of the information you've received and how to apply it to others now that you realize that the whole world is sleep. Let's read it. Mm -hmm. If I can, I want to read this uh, real quick. Yes, sir. In the book of Ecclesi Ecclesiastes in the Bible, chapter 1, verse 18. For in much wisdom is much grief, and he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. Read that again. For in much wisdom is much grief. The more wisdom you get, the more grief you will get. Read. And he that increase of knowledge increase of sorrow. The more you know, you're going to have pain. Because the knowledge you're getting is not just the truth and what holy days to follow and how to follow the law and getting this information. You're also learning the reality of the world we were born in. Mm -hmm. And how getting this knowledge, you have now become public enemy number one. So there's grief that comes with that. See? So it's important for you to know that in these times when you feel you are alone, that you're not alone. That, that time is to build your connection with the Most High until he gather the elect to the elect. Until we're all together. Which is coming very soon. You understand? So we have to make do with our time. Listen to, listen to what I'm about to bring to you here. Read Ecclesiastes real quick. Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha, chapter 2, verse 1. Go ahead. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord. If we come to serve the Most High. Prepare thy soul for temptation. We must prepare our soul for temptation. Now, when you hear the word temptation... The normal breakdown of that scripture based on what we have learned is someone tempting you 
to not serve the Most High, to break a law or to break something. But the tempting is deeper than that. Prepare thy soul for temptation. It's going to show you what the temptation is. Here, read. Verse 2, set thy heart aright. Get your mind ready. Why? And constantly endure. That what, when it says constantly endure, why should you constantly endure? Listen to this clearly. Read. And make not haste. And make not haste. In time of trouble. In time of trouble. That means when trouble comes, don't get ready to run back to something. It's going to show you. Read. Verse 3. Cleave unto him. Cleave unto the Most High, which is this word. Read. And depart not and away. you better not run, because there is no options. That thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Because at the last end, your sacrifice will be rewarded. Read. Verse 4. Whatsoever is brought upon thee. Whatever comes on you, read. Take cheerfully. Take it cheerfully. Smile when things are coming at you. Read. And be patient. And be patient. When thou art changed to a low estate. So that temptation, first of all, when the Most High give you the truth, you are going through a transformation in which certain things won't work. And you're going to be brought low on purpose. That's the temptation it's speaking of. Mm -hmm. That's the Most High stripping you of anything we've received of Satan mm -hmm. so that he can build us with our faith in him. Because what happens? No soon as, we've, no soon as you get the truth, brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. we become an enemy to the God of this world. So what he does, okay, since you don't want to serve me, you don't want to serve me on Christmas? You don't want to serve me on Easter anymore. You don't want to acknowledge me and I've given you everything. I've given you the corporations and the money and all that so that you can become fruitful in this world. I'm going to start pulling my power back from you. You're going to lose your job. You're going to do this. And you're going to do this because why? You gain all this prestige in my world. So when you start losing things, you'll be like, oh, well, what's going on? Since I got the truth, things are going worse for me. That can't be the real God. But it's really you're thinking in reverse, brothers and sisters. You're believing the prosperity gospel. You're thinking in reverse. When you get this truth, anything Satan has given you, he's going to look to start snatching it from you. Because he's the God of this world. And then anything you get after you're brought low, you know it's from the Most High because you've lost everything. You're going to cleave to him. And he's going to build you up to strengthen your faith. And you'll know that everything you got was from the Most High. Because it was through your faith and persevering through, through that metamorphosis, through that change. Now you're directed through the Spirit. You can't fall now because now your thoughts are clear. You can't fall now. You're getting direct. Information from the most high on what to do what to do next. And now you're growing up and growing up and growing up. People say, man, what's going on? Things are getting better and better and better. But yet you're not doing what everyone else is doing. Because he brought you low so that he can connect with you. This world keeps us busy and we lose the disconnect. We work all day, work all night, and we're so busy, we have nothing left to do but sleep and wake up and do the same thing again with no connection with no information on what's going on in this world and what to do. So the Most High is like, listen, you're too busy. You're going to lose your job. You're going to do this. I'm going I'm to take everything from you. And the biggest issue people have when they have the truth, they, they know they're being faced with this situation, and they try to hold on to what they have. Or try to make an excuse to why they need to hold on to this. No, you got, sometimes you have to let go. And receive the power and truth and understanding of the Most High. Right? What you have there? A uh, quick precept to what you were saying. Uh, Go ahead. This is, uh, Isaiah 59, 14 to 15. And judgment is formed away backward, or burnt, turned away backward, and justice standeth afar off. For truth is fallen in the street, and equity cannot enter. Verse 15. Yea, truth faileth. Truth faileth. 
and he that departed from evil maketh himself a prey. See that? He that departed from evil maketh himself a prey. That means when you depart from evil, these spirits are coming to get you. Why? Because it's not just you. Mm -hmm. They understand that once we wake up, brothers and sisters, that's not, we're not content with us just getting the information. They would be happy if one just woke up and kept it to themselves. They understand that the spirit compels us to pull others and have others see what we see. See, that's the threat. This world can only operate with the illusion it's presented to the people. Once you see the world for what it is, the whole world crumbles. It's an illusion. The whole thing is an illusion. Even the cities we've been placed in, where we were raised, our education, it's all an illusion. The cities were made to program and keep us asleep. So now that you wait, wait, have, have awakened to the truth and you're connecting to the highest, the God of all gods, you have a greater power. A greater God than the God that have set up these cities. So you are a problem. You will disrupt the normalcy of things. The Masonic powers have spent their lives and sacrificed everything they had to build this illusion. So what happens when one of the people within their little bubble wake up? You become, you become a problem here. So now you become a prey. They look to destroy you before others figure out what you figured out. See? See, that, that's enough to put you in a corner by yourself. It's a shame that you got all the truth in the world and you can't even speak to your family about it. You can't even talk to people about it because you're going to be looked at as an enemy. So Paul said it over and over again. Have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? I'm speaking to a family member earlier, uh, just speaking out of my mind and trying to convince this family member of what's going on and why she's sick. And what. I'm like, you're still taking those medications I told you not, that I've actually looked up online and gave you the side effect. And you're telling me you're about to go into the hospital for a side effect of the medication I told you to put down months ago. And she comes back and say, well, they keep telling me on TV and other people have this problem that I got to keep taking this. I'm like, so do you know that the whole system is connected together? That the pharmaceutical companies are connected with the corporate medicine and the corporate media? I'm like, you cannot hear what they're saying. I told you months ago to put the medicine down. It's going to kill you. Doctors are in position to use those side effects so that you can come back for a different medication for the side effect. And I'm, and I'm giving you this example, brothers and sisters, because when we can see things for what it is, imagine if everyone understood what I just said right now, what that would do to the world as we see it. It would break. Hmm. Everyone would understand, well, okay, you really don't get sick unless... You put something in you. People are actually born 100% healthy. <laughs> you understand? And obviously when they get sick, it must have been something from the outside that got into them that caused the sickness. Suppose everyone understood that. They would protect themselves from birth. So when it says you become a prey, what happens? When you begin to understand this information, everything makes sense. Everything. Everything. There's nothing in this earth that doesn't make sense now. So you can protect yourself and warn others. That makes you enemy of the state. Now you become a prey. They want to look at your past, look at certain things to try to tear you down and break you down. Because not, not because you are a threat to them personally, because this world works on an, on an illusion. And it, it can only run with sleep slaves. See, so when I start waking people up, I understand, OK. When you come to serve, deal with this truth, you must give yourself as a living sacrifice. Understand that you're putting yourself on the line for the sake of the people. So I must pray and stay in protection of the most high, knowing that I'm a prey. 
There's predators that want me to stop talking. But that comes with the business of the Most High. And a lot of you have dealt with the same things. And it's important you know that this is a normal progression for what the Most High is going to use you for. Read. Uh, this is back in the book of Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha. Yes. Chapter 2, uh, verse 4. Whosoever is brought, or whatsoever is brought upon you. Whatsoever is brought upon you. Take carefully. Take it cheerfully. And be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. When you lose everything, take it patiently. And I'm going to tell you, brothers and sisters, personally, I've been through it. I've been through the loss of everything. And you know what? I realized after losing everything that the Most High was still there. So it doesn't matter what your state is financially. Hmm. Your status on this earth have no bearing with your status in heaven with the Most High. When he bring you low, there's some people in that state that he needs you to get to. That if, if it wasn't for that low circumstance, you wouldn't have had that opportunity. So the Most High purposely brings us to a low estate. Then he brings us high. Maybe there's a situation where we need to connect to someone of high estate, like Christ connected to Joseph Arimathea's and those that had power and prestige who can give them ships to go from one place to the next. So even when you're brought high, that's for the purpose of the Most High and to do the work. You understand? So it's, it's nothing for your personal prosperity. Anyone that thinks of their personal prosperity and what they got and what they're going to do for themselves have missed the mark. The objective is always for the next stage of this truth. When you're brought low, when you're brought high, the same objective. When people lose everything, they get in the corner and start crying. Oh, my God, I can't believe. I don't know what I'm going to do. And they sit there and worry. Reminds me of when I seen the disciples on the ship with Christ and the storm started happening and Christ was in the corner asleep. And everyone is saying, oh, we're going to die. Everyone is looking around. They should have known that everything was going to be OK if Christ was in the corner asleep. OK, they lost their faith and then they, they waking up Christ saying Christ and Yeshua is looking at them like and then he moved his hand and the rain went away. He's saying, what's what's going on with you guys? Do you understand what's going on? Do you understand the power you have if you don't deal with fear? So Satan has set up a system, a class system a financial system to make people believe they're secure, even if they're on their way to hell. He set up a classification system to where if you are low on a totem pole financially, it worries you, it raises your blood pressure, you're feeling sick, you're feeling lonely. Based on what? Not because you're disconnected from the Most High, because you're not satisf satisfying this world's status. Because you don't, you're not looked upon as rich according to this world. Now you're feeling a certain type of way. Well, if money can change your mood, you're not down with the Most High. Okay? When the Most High bring you low and take everything away, understand that he only needed to do that so that you can see what faith is. So when he builds you up, you will, you will live the rest of your life on that faith and not the faith of this world, not the educational system that was set up to determine your status. Finish reading. Uh, Ecclesiasticus chapter 2 verse 5. Go ahead. For gold is tried in the fire. Gold is tried in the fire. I'm going to tell you brothers and sisters, I've seen a piece of gold before they do what they do with it. Mm -hmm. And if uh, any of you picked up a big piece of gold right now, 
the way it is before it goes to the fire, you would throw it back with the rest of the rocks. Mm -hmm. You would think it's worthless. You would pick it up and you see it shine and be like, oh, yeah, this is, it must be a different type of rock. <laughs> and just throw it away because it'll look nothing like the gold after it's through the fire. Okay, so some people have to be educated in understanding what gold looks like in its base state. It looks like almost a little rock with a little shine through it. Okay. So you have to realize just like that rock must go through the fire, which is a high temperature that burned all the infirmities out of it. And after the infirmities are gone, it shines. That's what we must go through. The infirmities that must be burned out of us is what we've learned in this world. And our dependence on this world must be taken away first. So in Christ's ministry with the disciples, the first point of them understanding truth, if you look at the Gospels, was the try-in of their faith. He had to build their faith first. So they were being tried. He said, drop your nets. I'm going to make you fishes of men. And I know Peter was looking like, what's going on here? This is the only way I can make money. He's like, no, we're going to take those same ships that you're using to catch fish, and we're going to bring the truth to this world. We're going to shine light to this world. I'm going to make you fishers of men. Okay. So you have to realize that wasn't an easy choice initially for them. Okay. They had all the substance to be able to spread the gospel and understanding, but they didn't have the faith. They had the ships, but what were they doing with the ships? They were catching fish. <laughs> you understand? So Christ was like, okay, you're going to, listen, and, and believe it or not, brothers and sisters, ships was the equivalent of a 747 jet or a private jet today. If you had a ship, you had it going on back then. So he said, let's clean all this fish smell up out of here. Let's, let's get all this out of here. Listen, you're going to take me over here. You're gonna, we got some people over there. You're going to take me all over this place. You understand? And we're still going to cast the fish, the net sometimes. And, and, and going to that, I used to always go back to that story. When I say the building of faith that, that Yeshaya gave us. The building of faith of how he had two fish and five loaves, right? Mm -hmm. I'm like, that's a deep test testament of faith with some brethren that you went to in the beginning and say, leave your ships and pull up your nets. They used to deal with tons of fish. So what type of testimony that was to them when Christ fed everyone with two pieces of fish and five loaves? <laughs> he was building faith. Building faith. And see, and that's the key component that's missing. And see, Satan set up a system today in which very little faith need to be exercised. Because the only thing you need to do is get their education. Their education replaces our faith. See? You get their education and you follow this. If you have an a MBA, you're going to make between this and this. If you have a bachelor's, you're going to make between this and this. So everything is predicated off of you. Everything is predicated off of your dedication to build something in this world. So you don't, you don't care about faith. You only care about your substance and what you work for. And that's good to, to one degree. But understand that you can never apply that to the Most High. Because that was your work for this world. OK, <clears throat> number one, if you have a master's a, a, and all that, and I'm not going against that because I've been educated in this world. But what I'm saying is you're going to come to some trials even on that level. OK, because the people that you're frequenting, frequenting with that education, you're going to have to make choices of compromise. And if you stand for the truth, you're coming to the bottom with the rest of, of the people. Are you willing to do that? <laughs> you understand? Are you willing to do that? 
Because that, that's what happens. Look at Luke. And I, I like to look at the disciples and what they went through because I'm like, that's the perfect trial. Yeshia, our anointed savior, dealt directly with them. Luke was a Theophilus, high educated, highly educated. He wasn't even one of the original disciples. He was a convert from the disciples. And Luke, with all his education, after being converted, was he was dealt a task of compiling all the disciples' personal accounts of Christ and putting it into a body of work that we could read today. So all of his education and all that, the rest of his life was sacrificed for that. So how much money did he lose? How much prestige did he lose being a high Theophilus in Rome and in Jerusalem? <laughs> you understand? And I'm, po I'm pointing this out because, brothers and sisters, we have many gifts out there. But the reality is, all of our gifts and what the Most High gave us, once he brought us down, was to now take those gifts and bring forth the kingdom of heaven. You didn't learn things for what you thought you were learning them for. And that's a whole, that, that, that's, that's, a, that's a cold, hard reality. That's a hard reality because we used to have everything for ourselves. This is for me, this is for my family. Right? Finish reading what you have because there's some other points I want to bring out. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 5. Go ahead. For gold is tried in the fire. For gold is tried in the fire. Go ahead. And acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. And acceptable men, and it's speaking of women too, in the furnace of what? Adversity. Of adversity. So you're going to go through some adversity with the truth. Let me tell you, it's going to come to a point where you're even called the devil by people you love. People are going to call you crazy because you don't want to do certain things. Because you don't want to subjugate or, or bring your children under the submission of this world. They're going to say that you're unfit. I hear it over and over again, what brothers and sisters go through. And I'm not being uh, uh, a person where you would think I'm being condescending or, or emotionalist when I say, smile. Thank the Most High. If you were doing all the right things, the world would love you. While, while, while I would love to sympathize with what you're going through, that's what the Most High have you go through to be tried. See? So that you can come back stronger and better. Alright? But the first sign of adversity, people, some people find an excuse to say, plug me back into the matrix. I don't want to know nothing. Make me a movie star. Just, I don't want to remember nothing. Plug me back in. Because sometimes the heat is too much. I've given up that option a long time ago realizing <coughs> there is no option. The cities that were built in this earth mimics ancient Babylon. And these cities were built as a program mechanism for the people. And that soon all these cities will be broken and our city will appear. I realize there's no other place to go and operate as if I don't know what I know. There's no way I can go somewhere, even with an education background, and sign an application and go work up in somebody's corporation. There's no way. There's no way. Because I understand, I know what's going to happen to this world. And if I have faith, 
we must build for the kingdom to come. If I really know that this kingdom is being prepared for me, then I cannot help this world fight against mine. And it gives you a whole, let me tell you, the truth gives us an entirely different mindset because no longer can the world can dictate our path. We call the shots that the Most High give us. Okay, not the other way around. We're not controlled by this world. So this is what happens when you grow past your low point. Understand that the Most High had to strip you of things and say, okay, let me see what you're going to do now. Let me see if you're going to run back to your master. Okay. Because the options are out there. Let me see you go crawl back to your master. Go, ex go, go to the beast. Or will you take what I'm giving you and let me build you from scratch? Read. I want to read this real quick. Yes, sir. Uh, it's for those who may be considering that option of going back. This is, uh, 2 Peter 21, uh, 2, 21 through 22. Go ahead. For Second that, Peter's. Uh, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 21 through 22. 21 through 22 reads what? For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness. It, it, it would have been better for them not to know the way of righteousness. Then after they have known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. Open the door. Read it again. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness. It would have been better for them not to know the way of righteousness. Then to have, let me get back to it. For it had been better for them not to know the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn away from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb. It has happened to them according to the true proverb that what? The dog is turned to his own vomit again. The dog is turned to his own vomit again. And the soul that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Crystal clear. So really there is no choice. The only options is to go to what we thank the Most High for saving us from. The only option is to turn back to ourselves and our sins and to the lifestyles that meant hell. That's the only option, is to go back to our former selves. Read on. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 6. Go ahead. Believe in him. Believe in the Most High. And he will help thee. And he will help you. Order thy way aright. Order thy way aright. And trust in him. And trust in the Most High. Ye that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy. Now fear the Most High is keeping his commandments. So while you're keeping his commandments, wait for his mercy. And go not aside, lest ye fail. And don't go aside through your trial when he's making you pure like gold. Or you will fail. See, these are direct directions from the Most High because I know what we go through with this truth. I've known people who was put out, put out of their house. It was between them and their wife in a Christmas tree. And the wife chose the Christmas tree. Okay? And the story was vice versa. I know a man who wanted to hold to a Christmas tree and his wife wanted the truth. An idol. And I'm just giving you these examples of these holidays that are coming, but it's, it doesn't just encompass these holidays. I'm going to tell you, in this truth, the Most High is going to put before you what you love first. Because he loved his son and sacrificed his son. So he's going to put what you hold dear and love to the stake first. And only after you go through your trials will he bring that back to you, if it be his will. So, so many times I see people in the truth and they have a gift or whatever, 
and they they think that they can give the Most High something based on their gift. The Most High gave the gift to you. You can't give the Most High nothing but obedience and sacrifice everything, including your life, for the truth. Okay. Finish reading what you have. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse uh, 7. Go ahead. Verse 8. Ye that fear the Lord, believe in him, and your reward shall not fail. And your reward shall not fail. The reward is coming back with Christ. Okay. Read. Verse 9. Ye that fear the Lord, hope for good and for everlasting joy and mercy. Look at the generations of old and see, did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded? Look at Abraham. Look at Yeshua. Look at the prophets. Was there anyone who trusted on the Most High? Look at Elijah, Elisha, and failed. Did the Most High ever forsake them? Look at us coming out of Egypt with Moses. Look at what he did with Joseph. Have he ever forsaken us? Read. Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Or whom did he ever despite that called upon him? For the Lord is full of compassion and mercy, long suffering, and very pitiful, and forgiveth sins, and saveth in time of affliction. Woe be to the fearful hearts and faint hands. Read it again. Woe be to the faithful hearts. Woe is destruction to the faint to the faithful hearts. And faint hands. And the faint hands. And the sinner that goeth two ways. And the sinner that goeth two ways. Okay, that's what happens. It's the sinner that don't know exactly what they want to do. Because why? One of their choices is to indulge in their sin. And to continue doing what they think. They try to make a law into what they want to do in the truth. And the example I can give of that, and I say it over and over again, and I'm going to put it out there one time for the last time, this thing where people think they can deal with marijuana and drugs while dealing with the truth. That's a sinner that what? Read it again. Woe be unto him that is faint-hearted. Faint-hearted. For he believeth not. Salaki, verse 12. Woe be to the fearful hearts and faint hands. And the sinner that goeth two ways. And the sinner that goeth two ways. I'm with the truth, but I'm trying to use the truth to excuse my sin. Not understanding you're letting in every demon from West Hell. Not only with you, but amongst everyone around you, including the spirit of death. Okay. And you're going to have sinners that try to use the truth. To excuse their behavior because everyone can see their sin. So they're going to try to say, well, yeah, we can do this according to this scripture I learned. And this is the, this, this is the, uh, uh, the cherry on top of the whole thing. They'll usually say the elders know. And I'm putting that out there. If you know anybody that's doing some things that you know is wrong and say the elders know, hit, hit up the elders. Usually, if you see something is wrong, it's wrong. I want to put that out there, too. But I'm not going to go into that lesson. Let's, let's continue to go into the trials of what happens when one get the truth. Read. 13. Woe unto him that is faint-hearted, for he believeth not. Therefore shall he not be defended. Verse 14. Woe. When it says he shall not be defended, when Christ was crucified, the accuser of our brethren was cast down. And now we got an adversary instead of an accuser before the throne, which is our Savior, Yeshua. Advocate. Advocate. I'm an advocate, excuse me. Excuse me, an advocate, not an adversary, excuse me. Let me, an advocate. Someone as an intercessor, but intercessor between the Most High and us. The adversary, excuse me, was cast down. Mm -hmm. So what we have here, when our reports go before the Most High, which are the reports of the angel of the presence, we won't have a defense. Okay. 
when we operate a certain way, when your prayers and all that go before the Most High, they will not be defended by Christ. Read. 14. Woe unto you that have lost patience. Woe to you who have lost patience. Because I know there's people who have been strong in this truth. But yet their faith through time has waned. And I'm speaking of people in a truth for two years, three years, five years. And I'm perplexed because all I can say is try to be in this truth and be stronger than you've ever been for 20 years. Mm -hmm. Okay. And never forsake the most high. Even through all the adversity, falling or whatever the case is, but you still stayed with the most high. Try to sacrifice your whole life strictly for the truth. There's no time period. We should never lose patience with the most high and with the brethren. Read. Woe unto you that have lost patience and what will ye do when the Lord shall visit you? Mm. They that fear the Lord will not disobey his word and they that love him will keep his ways. They that fear the Lord will seek that which is well pleasing unto him. And they that love him shall be filled with the law. Will be filled with the law. Read. 17. They that fear the Lord will prepare their hearts and humble their souls in his sight, mm -hmm. saying, We will fall into the hands of the Lord and not into the hands of men. For as his majesty is, so is his mercy. So we'd rather fall into the hands of the Most High than in the hands of men. So we deal with, with, with what we need to do. We deal with going through the trials, the tribulations, being brought low, making a choice not to succumb to the pressures of this world. Because there is a lot of pressure, and it usually will come from those close to us. So what happens when we first get this truth? Let's go to Ezekiel 3 real quick. And hold Ezekiel 3 and get Revelations 10. Let's start at the first verse of Ezekiel. Ezekiel Revelation. 3. Ezekiel 3? Yes, sir. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 1. Yes. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat that thou findest, eat this roll. Eat this roll. And go speak unto the house of Israel. When it says, eat this roll and go speak to the house of Israel, today that roll is, is in text. In a book called the Bible. Back then the roll was the scroll. Before the scrolls it was called the heavenly tables. The same things that are written in the heavens and the stars are written in the book. It was called the heavenly tables. So what's in the stars? I'm talking about the original intent of the stars not astrology. But in astronomy, it's a story from the beginning to the end that have already been written. Okay, and what's the difference between astrology and astronomy? Astrology <clears throat> is witchcraft. Dealing with the horoscopes, that's witchcraft. Because they use astrology for the psychological uh, uh, connection and behaviors with the people that are born under certain stars. That means they understand your weaknesses and strengths knowing you were born at a certain time and it's used against you. Astrology is true, but it's witchcraft. It's used to play on someone's natural behavior. 
based on them being born at a certain time. There's certain traits and behaviors with a person that was born at a certain time of the year. And they utilize that information. But it was only it was only for the angels to know that. We weren't supposed to use this for necromancing and playing on someone's emotions because we know their behavior patterns. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. You wasn't supposed to know how you're going to feel today and who you're going you to meet tomorrow. Okay? So there's a clear difference in what the disciples were dealing with and what we were dealing with in the Old Testament when reading the, the tables than what we're seeing now. They were reading, if they could read the tables and put them into context, it would be the Bible. It would be the Bible. The heavenly tables from the beginning was made scroll and given to Moses. When he's seen the beginning and the end, it's written in the stars. So now Ezekiel, like the other disciples, they were shown what? Everything. So he says, Ezekiel, eat this roll. And that's the spirit on us when we first have the truth. That means we tear a Bible to shreds learning it. And I've seen some people's Bible twisted and marked all over the place where only they can understand it. And I look at their Bible, and I don't say anything, but in my mind, I'm like, okay. I can relate because I was there. I tore my Bible apart marking it and putting it in a way where only I can understand it. So when other people see it, it's like, man, huh, you can take this. <laughs> but I knew how to get everything I needed out of that Bible. I marked it specifically for me, and I know that progression we go through with that. That's that, that's that time where we're brought low, we don't care what happens to us, and we're just sucking it all in. We're just getting everything the most out because we know this moment is not going to be forever in which we can understand things, and it's, it's like the most High is writing it before us and understand everything clearly. It's like we understand that it's only a moment of time that we go through this. So we can't sleep normally. We can't eat normally. Only thing we can do, we're living off of the word. We're eating that role. That's the beginning of this truth. Where everyone is looking at you like, you've been a, I've never seen you obsessed with the Bible in a church like this. Where you never was tasked with learning the Bible in the church. You understand? Because now you can relate the, to the Bible, understanding it's speaking of you. It's a whole nother level of connection now. So he told Ezekiel what? Moreover, he said unto me, son of man, eat that thou findest. Eat that thou findest. Eat this roll and eat. go... Eat this roll and do what? And go speak unto the house of Israel. So before you can speak and let the Most High know what Israel, what's intended for Israel, before you can go speak to them, you must go through that progression of just eating this truth and sucking it all in and what it means. And now you got enough to tell our people because when you start bringing out certain things, they're going to have questions. Okay, when you start saying certain things, automatically it clicks like, well, if... If you saying this, then what about this then? This doesn't make any sense. Now you're speaking and teaching against their programming. And you have to make sense of their programming now. Okay? <laughs> you have to now start making sense so that they can actually begin to wake up. So you got to go speak to the children of Israel. Read. Verse 2. So I opened my mouth. So he opened his mouth. And he caused me to eat that roll. That's what we all go through. That's a normal progression. Which is eating this word. It's food. That's why he told, that's why Christ told Satan during the temptation. Man cannot live off bread alone, but every word that proceedeth from the mouth of the Most High. Like this is spirit. You can live off of the word, brothers and sisters. It can take us to the point that of hunger, through hunger, to the point we get food again. Okay, the spirit can be nourished and, and maintain the body to a degree. 
But when you're in between those zones, that same spirit is going to say, okay, you got to eat something right now. Or, you, or your spirit is going to be all the way over. Okay. Go, you know, say, don't eat much. Just go get some lettuce, get some tomatoes, get some oregano. Just get a little bit. Don't eat much because you want to stay right here. So that spirit will let you know because as you read this, the Bible and read and, and actually deal with it, if you look at time, time actually go by fast. Mm -hmm. And you don't realize you'd have missed like two meals when you're really in the Bible because you're living off of it. It's a source. This world haven't been promoting to you. It's a source of life. Christ went and fast 40 days and 40 nights. Okay, so when Christ, the first thing Satan showed him at the temptation was, was this big thing of bread. <laughs> Go ahead and just take a piece. Just man cannot live off bread alone, but every word that proceeded from the Most High that tells me that there's another life source that sustains us. That's what happens when you first in the truth and everyone looking at you like you're crazy. You, but, you, 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 but again, you have to be, have some understanding of what they're seeing too. Because it's not normal. You're not on a normal life progression. You're, they're noticing you're missing certain meals. They're noticing certain foods you're not eating anymore. They notice that you're so consumed with this Bible that they're losing you as they know you. So you have to be have some understanding of what they're going through because they're right. They're right. You're being born again. You're changing right before their eyes. And the only thing that because they have nothing to draw from in this world because they don't really know what Christ went through and what the disciples go through went through. So their initial understanding of what they're seeing here is that you're crazy. That you're losing your mind. I've never seen somebody up in this Bible like this. All the time. And don't care about nothing else. They think you're crazy. So you have to understand that you're being moved to the crazy zone now. Okay? But that's what happens. So you have to realize, brothers and sisters, when the Most High wanted, wanted his elect to get this information, he would tell them to go from amongst the people. Knowing that it's a change that's happening. He said, well, go to this cave, go into this area and get away from the people because to this world, connecting to the Most High is crazy. Okay. Finish reading. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 3. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then I did eat, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. So it was sweet when he first ate it. Because the truth is sweet. That means you can sit down with any... I need you to go there. Stay there real quick. Yeah, this is finished. Hmm? This is it's finished. Now there's more I want to get out of okay. it. Okay. All right. Because at first what happens is it's sweet, right? And we go through that. Oh, there's no religion we can't break down. I mean, we're looking for a debate. I mean, you on a bus, you see a Muslim, oh, oh my God. I, I, I've been through it. Oh, let's let the Jehovah Witness. You never let a Jehovah Witness in your house. They knock on the door, you inviting them, you give them coffee, tea. You just, oh man, I, I'm, now I'm sparring now. We all go through that. Well, now you're trying to sharpen your sword in different debates. We all go through that. You're looking for someone to challenge now. Because you, you know you have information that this earth don't have in every religion. And you can see their deception coming a million miles away. So now, your only payback now is to show them they've been lying to you. <laughs> We, we all go through this. But what we, but I'm going to tell you, but what we're not privy to is the meetings in our absence. Families never came together for anything, but they're coming together and having little get-togethers that you're not invited to. 
So they're talking about you now. <laughs> That's how it works. It's like, is he, is he all right? It seems like uh, he's not. And the first thing the mama say, well, he's been online and he's seen some, somebody talking. <laughs> That's how it goes. And then I become public enemy number one. I, ain't, I don't even know what's going on. Everybody's aimed towards saying, trying to come at me now. And I'm just teaching the truth. All families hate me and everything. You understand? But that's a normal part of it. I'm going to be hated. They're going to call me all types of things. They're going to compile everything that's negative that's out there about me into one compilation. <laughs> and say, well, this is what he is. And ignore all the information that have been given through, through the inspiration of the Most High. A diversion. But finish reading. Uh, verse 4. And he said unto me, son of man, go, get thee unto the house of Israel and speak with my words unto them. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech. So that means we weren't sent to a people of a strange speech. So the initial ministry was not to the Gentiles. Read. You good? Okay. Go ahead. Let me move that out of your way there. Go ahead. Uh, verse 5. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech and of a hard language. Of a hard language, read. But, but to the house of Israel. Now check this out, read. Verse 6. Not to many people of a strange speech and of a hard language, whose words thou canst not understand, surely had I sent thee to them. So, he said, so the Most High said, if I would have sent you to gather and bring this truth to the people of the Gentiles, the other nations. They would have hearkened unto thee. They would have listened to you. Read. Verse 7. But the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee. But I, and check that out. I'm going to send you to a people that I know is going to reject you and not listen. That means if this truth was for any other people first than Israel, all the other nations would already be under the truth of the Most High. If we would have sent to any other nation, they would have received it. Why? Because they always, as a people, wanted to serve the God of all gods. They just haven't been told that they were serving a lesser God. But if we told them that this God was for them, that part at the Red Sea, they would have received the information and accepted it and followed the Most High's law. We would be in the kingdom right now. Christ would have returned. But because we are sent to a rebellious people, and I see it, no matter how much you do for them and give them, they'll always find a way to turn and to misplace your purpose and to destroy what you have, you sacrifice your life for them and they'll look to destroy you for it. Only Israel. Only Israel. Only God's people. And they forget, they forget about those moments when they didn't know anything or wanted to understand something. And then the Most High gave them a beacon of light. And that everything began to make sense. And who was there giving it to them through the Spirit of the Most High? They forget everything. And they will turn on their own and you know what we must accept that too because they turned on Christ that's that all comes with it brothers and sisters it, it all comes with the territory some people will say we got to go through all this it becomes bitter and bad why should we even deal with this then where's our alternative <laughs> is there an alternative but to deal with this and persevere through it until our kingdom come is there a choice? The only option is this world. So we must be long-suffering and just deal with each other and forgive each other through all these shortcomings. We have to. We just can't say, well, I'm not going to deal with you no more. I don't want to deal with you no more. There'll be no people to deal with. There'll be no people to teach. <laughs> 
So we must forgive, persevere, love anyway. Read on. Verse 7. But the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee, for they will not hearken unto me. He says, listen, they will not listen to you because they won't listen to me. So Ezekiel is sitting there, he getting all this information to go and tell Israel the kingdom will soon come. That the kingdom is for them. And the most hard tell them straight up, listen, you're going to have to be tough as nails here because they're not listening to me. But I'm going to send you to them. And they're not going to hear you either. <laughs> but, but you got to teach anyway. So if you think you're going through something personally with your family members and all that, look at what the disciples and look at what the prophets went through. When the Most High told him directly, these people that ain't listening to me, when you are, you grow up, so why should I be flogged and whipped and get things thrown at me for people that don't want to listen to you? But he had to go anyway. He had to do it anyway. Because where's the options? This whole world belongs to Satan. There's only two masters, brothers and sisters. Don't let anyone uh, bewitch you into, but think, into thinking that you can play the middle on this one. If you're not serving the true God of Israel, you're serving Satan. There's only two masters. So with that with that knowledge, I know that I have no choice. Okay? If I'm not doing what the Most High said, by default, I'm serving Satan. Which means if I decided, getting all this information, and decide I'm never going to say anything again. And don't do nothing else. And don't even bother anyone else. I'm still serving Satan. Because I'm not doing what I was called to do. <laughs> Hands tied, right? Hands tied. That's what the truth is. We're bound to a kingdom. Read. Uh, the rest of verse 7. For all the house of Israel are imputed and hard-hearted. Behold. I have made thy face strong against their faces, and thy forehead strong against their foreheads, as an adamant harder than flint have I made thy forehead. Fear them not. Fear them not, because our people are even going to go to the point of threats if we begin to teach this truth. And that's almost a segue into what's going on with Brother Gaja. In the great work that's being done in England with Peace FM. And that's almost a segue to what I need to talk about in a couple of minutes about what they did now that a Jewish guy came on the radio show and exposed all the dark secrets that we weren't supposed to know that happens in Judaism practices in Judaism and now that meant a suspension of the radio show indefinitely without a formal investigation and I'm going to talk about that in a minute I'm going to show you how you all can help us with that and we have some uh, footage we have some footage that we're going to show that soon will be released and I'm going to tell you all the whole spiel here. And we wanted to talk to you all first before we release the video publicly. Okay? But I'm just saying, this is what we have to go through. Read. Verse 9. As an adamant harder than flint have I made thy forehead. Fear them not. Fear them not. Neither be dismayed at their looks, for they are a rebellious house. For they are an rebellious house. So the Most High gave us this role so that we can go speak to a people that will even reject us. But there will be the few Jews that the Most High will utilize. And I'm going to tell you, 
when one come to the truth, the true knowledge of the Most High, the angels rejoice. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't take a thousand people to come to this. This is not the mega church of Satan. <laughs> the Most High is only dealing with a few. So if you don't see the large in number and think that that's the example of whether or not the spirit is there, the spirit is actually in the medic mega churches to tell you the truth. The spirit of the devil. The spirit of the fallen one, Satan. Hmm. And I even checked this out because the closest thing I've seen in mainstream religion as far as organization and bringing forth some level of information to some degree, at one point, to some degree, even though it's satanic at its core, was the Jehovah Witnesses, started by a Jewish guy named Charles Taze Russell. But now they're moving their literature into accepting a one world leader. They're shifting their whole thing into accepting the one world order and how to operate within it. I even got the article. I'm going to go into that soon at, a, at another time. So Satan is now is about to come from behind the curtain and unite all these religions that were set up by Masons. Now let's show you that John the Revelator went through the same thing before I go into the, my next part of this. Oh my goodness. <laughs> let's go. Revelations 10 and 7. Read. Uh, Revelations 10 and 7. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God shall be finished as he have declared to his servants the prophets. And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again and said, Go, and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel. Now we know that little book that's open, open in the hand of the angel is the heavenly tables, which is the Bible today. Read. Which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. And when I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. Give me the little book. Read. And he said unto me, Take it. Take it. And eat it up. And eat it up. So John on the Isle of Patmos was also told to eat this roll. To show you that it was it's from the heavenly tables, it tell you the angels are holding this. Read about the angel again. Uh, verse 8. And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again and said, Go take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel. The hand of the angel, read. Which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. Which standeth upon the sea and the earth. When I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the book. He said unto me, Take it and eat it up. And it shall be, it, it shall make thy belly bitter. But it shall be in thy mouth sweet. It shall be in thy mouth sweet. When it says the angel between the sea and the earth, you can just look at the feet, foot on the, right here. His feet is on the earth, one is on the sea, and his hands are like this. So the heavenly tables are in between the book. It's the stars. That's that little book that's in the angel's hands. That was made into record they're holding the truth of the Bible read uh, it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey and I took the little book of the angel out of the angel's hand and ate it up and ate it up read and it was in my mouth sweet as honey it was sweet as honey but what and as soon as I had eaten it my belly was bitter. My belly was bitter. Because why? It's sweet at first. Until you realize what comes with all this knowledge. What comes with all the truth. The reality of the world we, we, we are in. And the fact that we have been initiated from the Most High Himself to fight against this world. And what it may mean for us. All those realities come into fruition when you eat this roll and understand that you've actually been initiated into a spiritual army against the armies of this world. The example I can give you on a low level, those that are in, in Freemasonry today, a lot of them are initiated. Some request, but a lot of them are pen, 
handpicked. And it's not until they're between the 30 and 33rd degree that they're told that their doctrine is Luciferian. And it's their job to find and destroy those who belong to Christ. So that's their initiates. And when they get high in rank and high in understanding, they know spiritually who they, be in it, who they have been initiated to fight against. Those enlightened ones who, didn't, who wasn't initiated or chosen under Lucifer. So those that get the truth are the same people who could see that chose Christ instead of choos choosing the dark forces. So when we get the truth, we realize we've been initiated to fight against their ideology, their understanding, their programming, their God. See, that's how this works. So I know you go through all the little trials and all that initially, but if you sustain and go through those trials, you will realize your part in this fight. You, you must be patient. The same way if you join an army, you, uh, uh, you're a private at first. <laughs> you understand? And they got you running around and your face in the mud and you're feeling low and bad days and your feet is hurting and you're marching and, and a guy hollering all at you and you're feeling, oh, what did I get myself into? <laughs> you, you actually being broken to become what? A force. That's on the left hand side. So there's going to be some changes in our lives on the right hand side that don't feel good. That you're going to feel that this can't be the most obvious. It's not even the most obvious. I lost everything. I hear people say that. Something can't be right here. Well, you haven't been reading the truth. Because one of, one of, the, one of the key things, one of the key points of getting the truth is falling and losing everything. And then questioning, what have you done? <laughs> Started saying, well, what, what choice did I make? But you have to go all the way through it to see the choice you made. So that's faith because he's not going to show you the end of your life, per se, in this life. We see the kingdom and Christ coming down and him giving rewards. But he don't see the, the blessings you don't see initially the blessings you can get until you got them and know what you need to use the blessings for. So when you're halfway through, that's when Satan come in and say, listen, you may have made the wrong choice here. <laughs> you understand? And this is still here for you. You may have made the wrong choice, but your life is still here. Now, just back up from that Bible <laughs> and come back. Don't worry about that Israelite stuff. I got a church for you. Some good people in there. Mm -hmm. You can just go back to your church. They got dinner for you. Everything is good. Mm -hmm. Go back into your programming. You got your fellowship. Mm -hmm. Everything is good. And then you're going to start resolving things. Well, I can celebrate Christmas and Easter. Why? Because I know in my heart is not right, but I'm doing this so I can go in and I can convert other people through due time. That's how they try to convince us that they haven't turned to Satan. I'm just infiltrating right now. I'm like Paul. Paul didn't celebrate Christmas. <laughs> so what I'm putting out there, brothers and sisters, is that it's sweet at first, then it becomes bitter. And the reality is, when you get into the truth, you're going to find the sweet, all the sweet stuff happened in the beginning. <laughs> That's where all the sweet stuff is. The real trials, and you, you have to just take a blessing with all the good stuff you can get in between. But the reality of what this life is, it becomes bitter. People will talk about you. They'll say things about you. They'll even try to harm you. All these things come with it. See? But you have to keep on going and keep on going. And, and 
and learn how to operate with those who can't see. The Bible says, if you cast your pearls before swine, let's get that real quick. Be careful not to cast your pearls upon swine, lest you be ran under underfoot. What that mean? Read it real quick. Uh, this is uh, St. Matthew chapter 7, verse 6. Yes. Give not that which is holy unto dogs. Give not that which is holy unto dogs. Read. Neither cast ye your pearls before swine. You cannot cast your pearls before swine. Why? Lest they trample them under their feet and turn you and shall rend you. And shall destroy you. That means you cannot force information on people who's not worthy to receive the information. You try to force this on somebody. They can use the same mm -hmm. things you're bringing them to tear you down and to destroy you. So if you see some people that are rejecting you, the Bible gives you a number. After the first and second ammunition, one is a heretic reject. You got two times to try to show somebody something before. And if you keep forcing it on them, they're gonna make, they, it's going to be offensive to them now. They're going to look to destroy you now. The most I give you two times to show somebody. After the second ammunition, you got to reject them. You got to say, not reject them to the point where I don't want to deal with them. But don't go there no more with them. Wait till the spirit brings them around like he brought you around. Because anything you do, they're going to use an opportunity to rend and destroy you. You cannot cast your pearls before swine. So Christ wasn't trying to cast his pearls amongst the Pharisees and scribes, knowing that they, in, in their heart, they wanted him dead. So he didn't give them the mysteries to the kingdom of heaven. He didn't give them certain information because it wasn't meant for them to get it. He didn't cast his pearls before swine. So you have to get out of this mindset that I have to just give this to anybody I see and don't realize that there's an order of how to relay the information. There's an order to it. Or, believe it or not, this, this truth can be used in reverse. Mm -hmm. Satan can use what you know to help you destroy yourself. There's an order to it. This is not for you to go into your home and become a tyrant with the people you love. That's husband or wife. That means if your wife is celebrating Christmas, and don't get it right now, you can't take that from her. Okay? You have to go with the scriptures that, that speaks about dealing with an unbeliever. If she be pleased to dwell with you, you can't cut her off. That means she still love you, and, you are, and she always loved you, and Christmas was a part of that love. You can't expect her to snap right out of it. You understand? You have to realize what she's going through. And if she say, I still love you, but I'm still going through a transition here, you have to work with her through that transition. And vice versa. That don't mean you celebrate Christmas, but understand what that means for her. You don't got to buy no gifts. and Like, listen, babe. All right. Well, you're going to deal with that. Understand I'm not going to participate. But until you see it and know it for yourself, I can't take that from you. As long as you still make sure the things we have in agreements in love, we keep that going, in time you'll understand. Instead of coming through your house and being a tyrant now and just want to tear everything apart, and she didn't have the opportunity to see what you've seen yet. It's wrong. That's being a lion in your own house. And the same way when it comes vice versa. There's a way in which we can operate with this knowledge and bring souls to the most high without becoming a tyrant. Thinking that we now must dictate the law everywhere we go as if we haven't sinned. That can't be. That can't be. So what happens is we turn enemies on ourselves and then claim it's because we stood for the most high. No, you just didn't use wisdom when you get that roll, you eat it, it's sweet, but you have to go through the, the most high is giving it to you for your transformation now.
so that you can have the wisdom to know how to deal with those who are without. That's what the truth is for. And then they'll come around, not because they've seen it, because they've seen the change in you and they know you. So when they see a change for the positive in you, that is what's going to make them say, well, listen, show me what you've been seeing. Because this thing has been changing your life. Now you're dealing with the truth on how to become a person that proselytizes, that brings people to the knowledge without offense. What you got? Uh, 1 Corinthians 8 and 1. Read it. Now as touching things offered unto idols. As touching things offered unto idols. We know that we all have knowledge. We know that we all have knowledge. Don't forget it's sweet when we first get it. Go ahead. Knowledge puffeth up. But knowledge can puff one up. It can blow up our heads. Read. But charity edifieth. But charity, which is love, gives someone's understanding or edifies to a person. Charity or love, if you really love a person, you're going to work with ways they understand to get them to come around. Not force something on someone. These things can have sentimental value. I'm speaking of these holidays to people. Because there's a sentimental attachment to how they felt when they grew up and they seen the love of their mother and father together on that day. And that was there every year. They, they, that's when they knew that their family was together. Their father loved their mother. Their mother loved their father. It may have some sentimental values that they don't just want to forget. So it's a way we have to understand what people are going through without snatching it from them and snatching out their heart and snatching out their memories because those memories were real. <laughs> you understand? So we, we make enemies, and now they're looking to destroy us, not because what we had was a lie, because of what we did with it and how we're operating with it. See? Now that leads us to the next part. One moment. So understand that when you, go, when you start dealing with the truth, you're going to go through these transformations. You're going to go through these changes, but we have to endure. And once we get the knowledge of truth, we have to be, use wisdom on how we deliver it and operate with others. We really do. And be patient through the whole thing, through this whole transformation, brothers and sisters. And I'm saying this because we just give you the truth and you, we, and you get it out there and you get all this information. A lot of you get meat before you get milk sometimes. You just go to the video that you want to see. But you need instructions on what to do with so much information. Because that information can puff you up and destroy you. So it's wrong that we can give you all these information and precepts and how the calendar works and what holy days are really so and all that. But it means nothing if we don't deal with the spirit of charity and love and how we deliver the information. All right, you got anything else there? Uh, just one last reference to it. Okay, go ahead. Uh, Acts 14, 21 through 22. Yes. And when they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many, they returned unto Lystria and to Iconium and to Antioch. Yeah. Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith, and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. Through much tribulation, we enter into the kingdom of heaven. So the closer we get to the kingdom, the more tribulation we must endure. But we're not to back away. We are to take whatever stripes we get like Christ did and keep going until we're all together in that kingdom. And see, and that's the true direction. That's what we're looking for. With that, I'm going to say shalom, and I, I'm going to need your help on something. So give me one moment, and I'm going to go into what's going on over there.